Hey everyone, it's Maggie here, and uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit of security concerns. And so, what brought this on? We've got everything going on from COVID-19, all these violent protests, riots, and it's just this year's been kind of crazy. And so, we wanted to talk about preparing for that and for what's going to probably come this fall when we have a resurgence of COVID-19, uh, particularly after the election. I think no matter who wins, we're probably going to have some 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 violence erupting there, depending on how what plays out. Um, and so we, we wanted to talk about actually how to prepare for this. Now, there's tons of channels out there that talk about things like stocking up on beans and rice and toilet paper, and whatever else you want. Um, and that's not what this channel has ever been designated for. Um, and, to, and so, so that's not what we're going to focus on. Now, this video we are going to play for both channels, so it is going to be uploaded. So if you've seen it on one of my channels, uh, it's the exact same video for both channels. So uh, just keep that in mind that, it's, that that nothing changes, but it's pertinent to all the channels. So that's why we decided to there we elected to use this one for every channel. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to talk about security concerns with our home, how to actually make our house or our ranch or whatever we're on, how to make it a little bit more secure, specifically to deter somebody like a home invasion more so than a thief. Thief we're not so worried about because the thief tries to come to the house when we're not home. So the thief is looking for easy access to uh, material values that they can then use to sell, pawn, whatever. Those are all replaceable by insurance, so we're not we're not really addressing those. Now these techniques will work to help keep thieves out of the house and to help make it a harder target. But what that's not the that's not the goal here. The goal here is simply to try to make ourselves a harder target for something like a home invasion, the one that's actually a violent threat to us. Now the best analogy to use is the old analogy of the bear in the woods and you're running with your friend. You should lay, lace up your shoes because you don't have to outrun the bear, you have to outrun run your friend, right? We've all heard that joke. That's kind of the same thing that we're looking at for this. You're not going to make your house an impenetrable fortress, but what we can do is we can make our house significantly harder to get into than somebody else's down the road. And so, and that's really what we're looking for. We're looking to, to, to make sure that if somebody's casing our house, that they're doing it for, that, that they say, this house is too hard, now we want to move on. That takes care of the thief. Now, the person that is actually a home invasion, they you have some value to them, whether you're a lawyer, a banker, whatever it is, you just have money and they know it. Whatever the situation is, um, that that is a little bit different situation. And so, in focusing on that aspect, we're actually trying to harden the target here so that we can give ourselves a response time to grab our weapon, to to prepare, to get a hold of 911, uh, and, and to actually be able to fight off this, this force. And so, those are the first things that we're going to start with. Now I was going to film this part outside, but unfortunately we got it's raining today, so I don't want to get the camera out there in the water. And uh, so, so we're, we're going to just go ahead and take care of this inside. <clears throat> now, be honest. How many of y'all's floodlights look something like this? You've got broken bulbs. They're just old and dinky. The bulbs are burned out. Whatever it is, they're probably not lighting up. If they are, it's minimal. And they're LED, or I'm sorry, they're incandescent bulbs and not LED. So you're not getting uh, a great lumen count out of them, anyways. What we really want to do is we want to go ahead and upgrade all of those and replace them and, and get the old LED lights completely out of the house and specifically out of the exterior of our house. We want to have floodlights that can actually allow us to illuminate everything around us. Bad guys end up dispersing much like cockroaches. The moment we shine a bunch of light out there, anybody coming up to our house is going to feel very naked and exposed. And so we want to make sure that we have that. Now you have multiple options. You have ones that you can put on light switches, um, it, it, on, on time switches, which is what we use on certain parts of our house. And we have these time switches that, that turn them on at various times for whatever reason. And then we have, I don't want to go too specific on what I have at my personal house, um, but but uh, but we have, we have time switches, we have motion detector lights, we have we have standalone lights that I can just flip on a switch and I can illuminate both my yard, my fields, whatever it is that I'm trying to illuminate. It takes to see what's going on. So you want to use kind of a mixture of all three. That's going to come specific to your area. But if you're going to use motion detectors, places to put those are on driveways or front doors, somewhere that it will alert you to somebody coming up to a potential point of entry to your house. So LED floodlights, get rid of the old incandescent junk that you have that's probably broken and deteriorated anyways. All right, so the next thing that we want to talk about is we want to talk about our actual door locks and how this all works. Now, we've all heard somebody tell us, and specifically it's on every YouTube video about hardening security in your house, to take out the screws here in your hasp and your, your, in, your, um, in, in the deadbolt connection to the actual door frame and actually back those little screws out there about that big and put in a three and a half inch deck screw and that way you get some purchase into the actual wood framing and not just in the trim around. 
absolutely correct. But the one thing that we tend to forget is that when we do that, we still have a frame that's typically put on with something like finishing nails, brad nails, something like that, uh, maybe a few screws. Um, and so what that does is that means that even if we have these three and a half inch screws here, Everything else on this door is actually just held in by brad nails or finishing nails. And we see it all the time in construction. That's how doors are installed because that's all that's really required. And that's not what we're looking for when we're talking about security. So we want to get a little bit more purchase on that. And this is a little bit harder step to do because what you're going to have to do is you're actually going to have to come in here and take the trim off. And what you want to do is you want to take the trim off and then you want to get a pack of shims from Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. And you're going to come push this weather stripping back. And once we push that weather stripping back, we can then put those shims in that door jam to keep our distance that way that we don't screw up our door jam. And then we're going to run three and a half inch screws all the way around the frame and actually get this frame really, really solid in here. And that way when somebody's kicking it or something like that, it's not just a bunch of finishing nails holding it. It actually has to break at this part here where the deadbolt is, which we can actually reinforce. There's different reinforcers. For it, there's the night guard system that you can buy that goes on the floor that keeps it from being able to kick in. But if this won't stay on its frame, that doesn't matter. That won't stop. It'll just buckle off the frame at the top and it'll push it right over. And so we, we want to make sure that we have this solid in. And so what we've done here to all of our doors is we've put a, uh, with the three and a half inch screw with shims about every foot all the way around. And so that way this frame is really, really solid in and, and it, uh, there's it's virtually no way it's going anywhere. And then we look at our doors. We want to make sure that we have steel doors actually wherever possible we want to have steel doors coming into the house. Now that's not always possible. We want our front doors to be nice and beautiful and so there's 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 kind of a balance there to keeping things in style. Uh, but anything like a garage door specifically something going out to the garage certainly needs to be just a solid steel door. It needs to be that for fire rating anyways but we can go ahead and do it for a security upgrade to make sure that we've got a little bit more protection. Now as far as our locks go, on here, these are actually going to be getting upgraded. You can see these are quick set locks <clears throat> and quick set are notoriously about the lowest quality locks. They're the easiest to pick, easiest to bypass. You can bypass this one with a credit card. Very, very simple. So we're actually swapping this one out today uh, with a nice, a, a nicer lock set. I'm not going to tell it with say specifics, but there's different options. Slade is a very good option if you're just going to go with a builder's grade option. Um, they, they sell very good quality locks. And then uh, what we've elected to do is actually have a locksmith come out and they can do some hardening to it to where they, um, they, they adjust the pins, they, they make it to a, uh, a little bit tighter tolerances, and so you'll have the locksmith come out. And those are relatively inexpensive per lock to have them do that. And they just come out and they can harden it. And then we can put on here kick plates or the, uh, the night guard systems on the floor, whatever it is that you want to do to actually keep somebody from being able to kick this door open. We're not trying to create an impenetrable fortress, but if we can get ourselves 10 kicks as opposed to one kick before this door opens, that gives me plenty of time to respond grab a firearm, get my kids all into a safe room. Because if you've got a house that's spread out and you've got kids on this end, kids on this end, then you've got to get all those gathered up while you've got an assailant in your house. And so we're just trying to avoid that situation. We really just want to buy ourselves time to where we can respond. That first kick, we're getting awake. We're knowing something's going on. Second kick, we're in action. Third kick, we've got our weapon ready. 911 is, is dialed. And we've got our kids. We're working on getting them consolidated into one area that we can protect them. Picking is a skill that most thieves don't have, but anybody that would be a home invader probably is going to have at least a marginal skill on that, even if it's just buying an electronic picker and actually able to, 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 to jam it with that, or to use something along the lines of a bump key and pat and bypass it with a bump key. Those are all the things that we're trying to avoid. And so we're not talking about going out and buying $300 Medeco locks for, for every door because it's reasonably too expensive for most people to do but what we can do is we can make sure that we have a good quality lock on every single door coming into our house including the door between the house and the garage and we're going to go over that here next. Okay so next we look at statistics and we can see what the most likely outcome for an assailant or an invader trying to come into our house is and there's about three points of con or three points of entry that are the most common. The front door, the back door and then here the garage door. So we want to harden all of those respectively. Now, we would think that they would end up coming through a window, but the reality of it is, is that windows, uh, you have to be at least a little bit athletic to try to climb through most home windows. But then the bigger aspect to it is, is that if you've ever tried to break one of those windows, they actually are very, very loud to break. And so that's what the assailant or whoever is trying to avoid. The other thing they might be trying to avoid is any obvious sign from the street that the house has been recently entered in that way because they don't want somebody driving by calling the police. So they want it to, to not um, have the appearance of being broken into. So this gives them a very, very easy way in. So 
what we what we can do is if we if we cut the uh, we, we cut the little handle off. So we've got here on every garage door we've got this handle that unlatches the garage and allows us to open it manually. The problem with that is is that there's enough space on the outside that anybody can slide a wire coat hanger through and pull on this and actually release it. And that's what they do is they'll release it from the outside, lift it up about a foot, they crawl underneath, and they can do that in 10 seconds. Nobody will ever know. And then they have all the time they want to pick whatever lock you've used between the garage and the house, which again comes back to making sure that you have a good lock between the garage and the house and a good door there um, and that you keep that door locked. And, and, and so that actually gives you some protection if they get into this side of the house. And again, that also comes back to people keeping gun safes out here in the garage. Probably one of the worst places you can keep it because then once somebody's in here, not only do they have all your tools readily available to access that safe, uh, but they also have ample time with nobody seeing them and nobody's the wiser. They could spend a day in here if you're not home, two days in here if you're not home, just trying to get that open. And so that's what we're trying to avoid. <clears throat> So come by, cut your handles off. You still can leave yourself enough that you can actually use it from inside the garage, or just get yourself a step stool and you can always pop it. Um, but right here, there's no way for anybody to reach in a coat hanger and really grab that, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it harder for them to get through. So go by, cut your little handles off, and, uh, and again, make sure that that door between the garage and the house is hardened um, in some shape or form. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is actually having some concealment for our house. And so the first thing that comes up is blinds. Now most of us have blinds in our bedrooms or living quarters or somewhere in there. But the one that seems to get forgotten about it is always going to be something like these, these front windows here that give a view all the way through the house. Um, or that provide just an easy accessible point from the from the street to actually see through. The one that we tend to forget the most are those big glass front doors. And yes, they look great, but there's a problem with them is that I can see all the way through somebody's backyard from those front doors, and I can oftentimes do it from the street to the driveway. And so we want to have some type of concealment there because we don't want people being able to see in and case our house. We want to make sure that what we're doing in there is not only private, um, but that somebody can't just, just look through and be able to see that yes, they have an alarm system, yes, they have a dog, yes, they're not home or they are home or whatever it is. Uh, we want to make that harder for, for anybody coming in. More than that, it just provides us some privacy. So we have multiple options here. You can even have, you have lines that roll down and that you can access from the top. And so that way you can allow some light in, but nobody can see through uh, or at least easily see through. Those are great options for some of these front windows like this. Um, and it's perfectly fine to leave them open during the day. Uh, but at night, we definitely want to have those blinds closed off and have it, have it secured inside our home to where we know that nobody can stand at a window and watch, especially without us seeing them. The next thing to remember on that is that if you have the lights on inside and the lights are off outside, obviously, and it's, meaning it's dark, it's, yeah, it's nighttime outside, anybody can see all the way through your house, especially if your blinds are open. Wherever the light at is where people are going to be able to see into it and it's going to blind you. Ever notice how you look out your window at night and you have to get up to the window, you can't see what's going on or have a big light on? It's because you've got all this light behind you coming through and, and that reflects off the glass and makes it significantly harder for you to be able to see through. But anybody looking in, they can see you from a quarter mile away. So control the visibility through your windows. Control that ability for somebody to see in. Control your ability to be able to see out. That's what those outside big bright floodlights do. They, they help you with that even if it's bright in here, it's brighter outside and that you're able to control that visibility a little bit. <clears throat> all right, the next thing we want to talk about is alarm system. So you can see we have an alarm system here that monitors all our windows, monitors the doors, monitors glass breakage. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do with those alarm systems. Now you get about 90% of the benefit of an alarm system just by having the signs out front and deterring people from coming and looking. But those signs have to look new. They can't be old and decrepit signs, otherwise people don't think the alarm's in, in actual play. But the other thing that you can do with them is a lot of counties have a certifying official or a certifying um, a department that comes out and checks those alarms. <clears throat> and what we can do is we can actually imitate stickers of that, even if our county or our city doesn't have that, we can actually imitate a sticker very easily by printing one off and slapping that sticker on the front of our house putting fake initials on it and a fake date on there that's a very recent date or at least within the last two years that says that this alarm is, uh, alarm is up to date until X, Y, and Z expiration date. And then you just put a new one on there every two years. And that that allows anybody that's actually trying to case the joint, they're going to think and actually they're going to know for certain that you have an alarm system even if you don't have one because, that, because nobody really goes through that extra step of doing that. And so that gives you kind of the benefit of doing that. <clears throat> um, now, I'm not suggesting that you don't have an alarm system, but 
if you don't feel like paying the monthly fee on it, then that's a, that's a decent secondary option. Now, paying that monthly fee on it, if you are paying, you need to use your alarm system. I can't tell you uh, how many times we go into houses where people don't use their alarm system. They have one, they pay for it monthly, but it's never turned on. Turn on your alarm system when you're away, turn on your alarm system when you're home. It's got settings for both, actually use them. And, that, and actually get the protection from the alarm system or cancel the membership and just get the protection from having the signs. Um, it doesn't make sense to try to be halfway in between that. <clears throat> now, there are secondary options to these sensors. There are secondary options. Something like uh, Simply Safe uh, makes, makes sensors that are not monthly monitored sensors that you can stick up there to every window to where you can know that if it's opened, it'll, it'll alarm. Same thing with your doors. Um, you can have these sensors on all of your house to give you some sense that, that somebody's trying to get into your house and that, that it'll wake you up. <clears throat> And that's really, again, what we're trying to do. We're trying to get ourselves awake and alert and ready for the fight uh, before that assailant has time to uh, readjust his plan. So that, that's, that's the eventual goal here. So that meets that requirement. Now, if you want your house monitored while you're gone, that's a little bit different situation. You have to have then an actual monitoring system. The way we kind of look at it, it with certain people that don't want to pay for that is that the insurance kind of covers your valuables while you're gone. So unless somebody's breaking in to specifically stage themselves inside and wait for you to come home, that'd be about the only situation where having that monitored system actually protects you, the homeowner, from violence. Okay, the last two things that we want to talk about are, first off, fences. Having fences around your house. Now, fences, even, even small four-foot chain link fences, provide a obstacle that somebody has to then climb over, feel themselves more exposed as they come over the top. And, and so even those small chain link fences provide some security. Six-foot fences that are wood fences provide you with a little bit of privacy as well as that security of somebody having to come through them without, the, and with them being hesitant to come through them because they don't know what's on the other side of that fence. They don't know if there's a big dog. They don't know if there's an alarm system. They don't know if there's motion detector floodlights. They don't know if there's a homeowner there that, that heard them coming and is waiting for them with a the firearm. And that's really what we're trying to create. We're trying to create a situation that is scarier for that assailant to come into our house than it is for us to have the assailant come in. And and so, and, and having, having big privacy fences does significantly help with that. So we want to have fences around our house as much as we can. Now realizing that we also, the most likely outcome is that we're gonna eventually sell our house and so we wanna keep our house updated, right? We're not putting a six foot chain link fence with concertina wire around it all the way around our house. That wouldn't be practical for, wouldn't be allowed in most HOAs, but it wouldn't be practical for most people simply because we're eventually going to sell our house and nobody wants to buy a house that looks like a concentration camp. And so we want to, we have to kind of balance those two. So with those fences, we also want to have our vegetation and everything trimmed back to the point where we have a good field of view around our house. We don't want hiding spots or anything that somebody can come up to the house. What we've seen too many times is that if you, if you, study the statistics on an, on a tax invest and, and look at the investigations and they're oftentimes cased or oftentimes cased from something like a bush that's in the front yard that the person can reasonably hide in and they can hide there all night long until you're gone for work um, in which case they just slip out and nobody's is the wiser <laughs> so having having all your vegetation trimmed back to where you can see not only through it but what's going on but that you have a good field of view all the way around your property um, that's that's uh, paramount to having having good home security is having this this ability to actually view what's going on around us. The last thing is dogs. Most people overestimate what their dogs are capable of. Most dogs are not going to fend off that attacker. Yes, there are some that are trained guard dogs, but unless your dog is trained as a guard dog, would not say that that's a primary thing to count on it, actually fending off an attacker. Yes, I understand that sometimes dogs are aggressive towards people coming on the property, but that's not to say that they will be aggressive um, unless they're trained to do so for, for, for somebody coming into the house. The caveat on dogs is that dogs are great alert devices. Uh, they, they hear everything, they wake up to somebody being in the driveway long before your alarm actually goes off for your house. Our dogs wake us up all the time with people driving by, um, and uh, which is somewhat annoying, but I'm always thankful for it that I've got something that alerts me to get up and come and check what's going on. Okay, the, and I'm sorry, there was one more thing that I forgot to mention, the, the final aspect to our home security that's a reasonable thing that we can do, we can't put bulletproof glass on our window. 
windows, right? Because most people just simply can't afford that. But what we can do is we can put the security film on our windows. Those are a great benefit and they will, again, they just slow somebody down. It doesn't stop somebody with a baseball bat from breaking out our windows and coming through, but it does slow them down because it takes multiple, multiple strikes to break through those window filaments. But the other thing it does is actually it helps our energy bills, which is uh, just a nice benefit for them because they're UV blocking and everything. Um, but uh, those security films just slow people down from getting into the house and that's all we're trying to do is slow somebody down from coming through. So the security films are very, very reasonable. Definitely have a professional install. I put it on when you ever people, homeowners try to put it on themselves. We see the bubbles and it just looks like a homeowner try to put it on themselves. So have a professional come and install the security films. That's probably the last step. The, mo the rest of this you can do for under $1,000. Having a professional come out and do that is going to cost several thousand dollars, so um, that's going to be kind of a deterrent to a lot of people. Uh, but if you can afford it and you can find it in your budget to, to do so, I highly recommend you do that. All right, thanks again for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I hope this helps kind of give you some ideas on uh, maybe a little bit different approach to home security. I know some of this is kind of basic and generic that you can find on 100 videos, but uh, hopefully I brought some kind of tips and tricks that, that y'all might find interesting. Um, we didn't talk about security cameras. We didn't talk about firearms. Those are sometimes out of certain people's reach. And uh, also, we didn't want firearms on both channels. That's why we didn't bring that into the equation. Um, but, uh, but, but again, security cameras are a great option. Uh, um, and we'll talk about those. Those kind of deserve a video all in and of themselves. And so we're going to talk about those at a later date. So um, depending on what channel you're watching this on, it's either Ironside Ranch or Battle Grill 6. Uh, but I really appreciate you all watching. And, uh, and make sure that you like, subscribe, share this video. That really, really helps us out. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Uh, we will have a little bit more information coming out about this. I might do a part two, depending. Uh, if you have any other tips and tricks that you find helpful, please throw those down in the comment box, guys. I love reading those and figuring out what other people are doing. Um, and it just helps us all learn. If I get enough comments down there, we'll do another video bringing in some of those comments and those suggestions and actually discussing